Greetings. In this tutorial, we'll look at what's new in FL Studio 20.1, including linking playlist tracks to instruments and audio, improvements to audio recording, the return of step sequencer looping, and more. Before we start, just a note that what you're about to see is optional workflow, so you can continue to use FL Studio as you did before. So let's jump straight in with the headline feature, Playlist Track Mode, Instrument and Audio Tracks. Previously, you could add plugins to the channel rack or drop them on the mixer track. Now, you can drop plugins on Playlist Track Headers. This creates an instrument track group from the channel rack to the playlist to the mixer. If I rename the playlist track, this is reflected throughout the group. So adding an icon on the channel will also add it to the playlist and mixer. Recoloring the mixer will recolor the channel and playlist track too. Nice. Two things to notice. First, the icon shows this is an instrument track or associated with one. Second, the channel routing is disabled. You can still use the control, but it moves the target mixer track rather than rerouting the channel. This preserves the relationship between instruments, mixer tracks and their effects. Notice dropping effects on the playlist track header now adds it to the linked mixer track and tweaking the routing control maintains the link. You can ungroup an instrument channel by right clicking the playlist track header and selecting track mode unassigned. Note that double clicking the playlist track header will open the instrument. Another nice feature of instrument tracks is automation is now bound to the parent playlist track. This will help you to stay organized. When deleting instrument tracks, we get some options. You can unlink the instrument channel or delete it. Then you have the option of keeping the patterns, mixer tracks and automation. In this case, let's delete it all. Another way to add instrument tracks is from the playlist track header, right click menu, track mode, instrument track. This opens your favorites plugin list. Easy. Audio tracks. These are like instrument tracks, but have some tweaks to improve audio workflow. In the case where you drop audio onto a playlist track header, you'll get an option to choose audio clip, this is the previous default behavior, an audio track, or an instrument channel like the kick. You can set the default behavior from the playlist edit menu, drop audio on track headers. So let's add a pair of shiny new audio tracks. I'll recolor this one to distinguish it. Notice the top track is linked to mixer track five and the lower linked to mixer track six. I'll now show you why audio clips are not bound to mixer tracks permanently. If I move the blue clip down, it's now linked to mixer track six. And if I move this one up, it's linked to mixer track five. In this way, any audio dropped on an audio track is automatically routed to the linked mixer track. Excellent. Similar to instrument tracks, if I create an automation clip for something related to the mixer track, like the fader or associated effects, the clip will be bound to the parent mixer track. And as normal, we can delete the audio track and everything associated with it. Audio tracks also enable some exciting new audio recording enhancements. You can now record into specified playlist tracks. Right click the target playlist track header and choose track mode audio track and then choose the mixer insert you'd like to record from. I'll choose 10 and I'll make it blue with a mic icon so it's obvious. Notice when I select an input, the mixer track is auto armed and is reflected by the A icon on the playlist audio track. Something else I hope you've noticed is the pre icon also lit. 
This is to draw your attention that it is now a switch to set pre or post FX recording. Pre-FX records audio before it passes through the FX stack. Post-FX records it from the end of the FX stack, where any effects will also be imprinted on the recording. By default, audio tracks are recorded pre-FX, and recordings are routed back to the insert they were recorded from. One final tweak, you'll notice the faders of deselected mixer tracks, arm for recording, show in orange. To record the first audio track, I'll select the main record and This is my first audio track. I'll mute it and record again. This is my second audio track. And a third. This is my third audio track. All the recordings are now grouped with the parent audio track ready for compiling into the perfect audio take. As before, automation will be grouped with the parent playlist track. And if we delete it, everything will go away. The channel rack. The first thing you'll notice are changes to the icons at the top. Apart from the close X icon, we see the return of the step length selector. We've also increased the maximum number of steps from 64 to 512. You can right click the control, so that's up from 4 bars to 32. As 32 bars is about 8 screens to the right, I can't show you it on camera. Or can I? Cool. And since the new controls take up more space, the swing slider is now a knob, but with the same function. Speaking of functions, you can now select multiple channels and select a custom swing amount from the channel rack menu, set swing mix for selected. Choose a preset value or enter a custom amount. Nice. And to the left, I'm sure FL Studio 11 fans have been eyeing off the loop icon. Let me explain for those of you who are new to the concept. I'll add a four beat kick. Oh, and now is a good time to let you know that we've added 55 new contemporary minimal kick samples. So the channel rack looping allows you to fix a problem when you are working in a pattern. That is, the kick channel stopped after one bar. With looping on, the kick will continue while you work on the piano roll in other channels. But wait, there's more. If you right click the loop icon, you can select independent loop controls for every channel in the rack. You can also right click the control and burn to pattern, and it will fill in the pattern to match the pattern length. And it gets even better. If you choose advanced looping, you can now decide how each channel loops. That is, the channel will not loop, or it will loop on the next step, beat, or bar. Or you can change the loop point to any number of steps. Lots of polyrhythmic fun to be had there. And before we leave the channel rack, we've also brought back the ability to see entire piano roll sequences. By default, you can see how many bars the channel rack shows. Set from the channel rack menu, show complete piano roll preview. Finally, the rapper now gives solo control of the instruments. And 
solo plus mix for effects. Great, so let's wrap up with some miscellaneous enhancements. Audio export. There's now an option to export mono audio. Choose to merge stereo channels or select only the left or right channels. We're sure this will help out some who want to use split mixer tracks to create mono stems. The playlist. There's now a new macro under Tools, Macros, Reset Empty, Playlist Tracks. And this is specific to the current arrangement. In the general settings, there's a new option, automatically check for updates at startup. So, if you were using 20.1, you wouldn't have missed the 20.1 update. The CPU meter can be right-clicked to replace the voice count with frames per second. That's a measure of graphics performance. And finally, for this update, the project info includes a summary of how many channels, mixer tracks, playlist tracks, etc. are in use, even that this project uses 376 notes. With that, we're sure you'll love the 20.1 update just as much as we love giving you lifetime free updates. The download link is in the video description. I'll leave you with a project showing off the new channel looping features. Enjoy! <laughs>